Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Man proposes, but God disposes. Always, always the question yet to be solved, the horizon yet to be reached, beyond which ever and ever there are further horizons and never the answer to the question. Was the wealth of the distant Indies lying beyond the curve of the earth the answer to the Spain of Ferdinand and Isabella? Was Sutter's gold lying beyond the high and forbidding western mountains the answer to the America of a hundred years ago? Is the shiny electronic basketball, the soon-to-be-launched satellite, the answer to mid-century man who proposes without consulting him who disposes? We do not know, nor do we presume to guess. But we do make so bold as to give you pause for thought. Listen, then. Listen, as Frank Lovejoy stars in The Outer Limit, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Zero minus 25. Zero minus 25. All right, men, settle down. Now let's settle down. You too, Bill, that book you're reading. Put it away. Anything you say, Colonel. No doubt you're wondering why we got you out of whatever warm beds you were in. Well, we've got a reason, a very good reason. This morning, we take the wraps off the RX-3. Now, most of you have heard Scuttlebutt that she's been modified. Well, she has. She's powered by eight rockets now. That's what I said, eight rockets. Designed to take man into areas of space that have never been explored before. And at a rate of speed to which no pilot has as yet been subjected. Now, Bill Westfall's going to take her up this morning as far and as fast as she can go. Joe? Yes, Colonel. You'll lead the 102s. You and your wingmen will be Bill's chase planes. We want observation at 40,000 feet. Yes, sir. Okay, here's how it plays. Pull the curtains on the map, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Now, you see it's circled here. Your rendezvous point we designated as point X. Zero hour is 0900. Joe, you and your red tails will take off at zero minus 15. Have you got that? Yes, sir. You'll make conventional climbs to 35,000 feet, rendezvous at point X. Call into me at control at 40,000 feet. Right, Joe? That's it, Colonel. Well, not quite. Now let's take a look at the weather. Feet. Yes, sir, Colonel. Uh, the weather is very pretty out, boys. All clear, ceiling unlimited. Uh, winds aloft at 1,080 miles per hour at 165 degrees. At 25,000... Hold it, Pete. Major Westfall. Yes, Colonel. This is primarily for you. Well, now, don't fret, Hank. I'm getting it. I just wanted to make sure, Bill. Go ahead, Pete. Uh, ground temperature is 60, estimated at 45 below at 40,000 feet. Uh, we expect no change for three hours. That's it, sir. Hang up. Okay, Joe, you and your boys go unwrap your 102s and have a nice time. <coughs> oh, Bill, stick around. I want to talk. How are you feeling, Bill? I feel real good. How are you feeling? Now, what about Molly and the kids? Are you worried, Hank? Don't worry. Well, I just want to know just how they are, that's all. Well, an hour ago, Molly wiped her hands on her apron, kissed me goodbye, and the twins want to be firemen this morning. Zero minus 20. Now, what are you... Zero minus okay, 20. Okay. Look, Hank, I've flown it a dozen times before. I know, but never for this speed and never for this altitude and never with eight rockets. The engineers are hitting you could break out of the stratosphere in this plane. Yeah, I heard. Now, get it out of your head. This is just routine. Well, look, Hank, I've studied the blueprints. I know I'm like a prayer. My brain is crammed with detailed specifications, estimated performances, and I know all the safety devices to keep me alive. You happy? All right, come on. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Yeah, right. I've got to say it, Bill. You know it better than I do, but I've got to say it anyhow. All right, you be a commanding officer, Hank. You know, you go ahead and tell me. Keep your throttles uniform or you'll wind up against the mountains. Yeah. Retract landing gear as soon as you're airborne. Maneuver for maximum rate of climb and a heading of 8, 7 degrees, which should bring you to 40,000 in less than two minutes using JATO, approximately one mile north of Rendezvous Point. Uh -huh. From there on, you'll be on rockets. Uh-huh. Zero minus 17. Well, go Zero ahead. minus you're 17. Oh, Bill. Come on outside. Let's go to the hangar. Bill. Yeah. You've got ten minutes of rocket fuel. Now get rid of those Jado bottles before you fire the rockets. Fire, fire only one, one rocket. rocket at a time. Now, uh, <laughs> now, Hank, you did just fine. 
I'm going to fly that baby higher and faster than anybody ever did before, just like you said. I'm going to take it up and bring it back. And then you come home and have dinner with me, huh? Yeah, sure, I'd like to. There she is, Bill. Yeah. She's real pretty, isn't she? I'll be listening in a control. I won't bother you until you're airborne. It'll be between you and the tower until then. See you later. Good luck. Zero minus three. Zero minus three. Good morning, Colonel. Oh, Mr. Hargrove, you'll be here at control with me? It's all right with you, Colonel. Well, I wouldn't have it any other way. You check the communications equipment, Sergeant? Yes, sir. And Major Westfall has been assigned a special radio frequency of 3970. Good, good, good. You'll take good care of it, Sergeant. We don't want it to poop out or anything like that, do we, Sergeant? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Well, no, sir, sir. Hargrove, I've, uh, I've got a thing on my mind. That boy in the plane you geniuses designed, he's my best boy. It's our best plane, Colonel. It better be. Well, now it's your turn. What have you got on your mind? Everything's in proper order, Colonel. The electronic brain, the recording equipment, the television cameras in the cockpit, everything. Every known scientific device, even some unknown. They've been... We're talking about a man. That's all I really want to get back out of this. What about the man? There may be one difficulty. Well, tell me about it. I'd like to know. The takeoff with all that load, the jets, the rockets, all at maximum fuel capacity. It's never been tested that way before. Go on, Mr. Hargrove. It's just that Major Westfall has only 10,000 feet to get his ship airborne. If he accelerates from zero to 300 knots in 10,000 feet, he should be airborne in less than seven seconds. Seven seconds. That makes it zero plus G. Yes, Colonel. Beyond zero plus G, beyond that we don't know. We just don't know. Oh, thank you. Thank you uh, for everything, Mr. Hargrove. Sergeant, flip your switch on Major Westfall. I hear he's got a swell program. Flip them all, Sergeant. Yes, sir. From RX-3, any change in weather? RX-3 from Tower. Barometer reading 29.7. Set your altimeter accordingly. Roger. Wind 15 miles from south. Zero Zero minus 130. Zero minus 130. Got it. Control from RX-3, over. Control to RX-3, go ahead. Control to RX-3. This is uh, just for you, Hank. Cabin pressure, okay. Oxygen pressure, okay. Hydraulic flight control, okay. Fuel pressure safety lock. All right, all right, all right. Get off the dime, kid. <laughs> Take a mill. Zero down, minus one. Zero minus one. Blue chief from RX-3, over. Go ahead, RX-3. I am ready to fire. Hold it. Okay. All set to fire. Clear? Clear. Starting starboard jet. Starting port jet. Zero minus 30 seconds. RX-3 from tower. Come in, tower. Western Airlines flight 303 reported over San Jose southbound. Navy interceptor on home leg in San Diego. United Airlines eastbound 4010 at 18,000 over Salt Lake City. No other aircraft aloft in the area. Zero minus Roger. 11. Tower Ten, from RX-3. Nine. Ready for takeoff. Eight. RX-3 from tower. Seven. Clear to take off six, on runway 27. Five. Good luck. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. Control from RX-3. This is control. Go ahead, Bill. Everything's great, Hank. She's a doll, baby. You were kidding with that takeoff, weren't you? It took that long to get it off. That makes it a takeoff, Hank. How fast are you climbing? Airspeed 690, approaching Mach 1. She's buffeting some. Bad. I'm still flying her. Hank. Hank. Yes, Bill. I just went through Mach 1. Speed of sound, straight up. But... She shake bad? Not a shudder. Wasp waist is a big help. She's a doll baby, Hank, a living doll baby. How do you feel? I like it here. Control from red tail one. Control from red tail one. 
Go ahead, Red Tail. RX-3 over rendezvous point at 50,000. He's ready to turn, Colonel. On schedule, Joe? On schedule. Control from RX-3. Control from RX-3. Go ahead, Bill. 55,000, Hank. Still a dial, baby? Still is. Hank, can you hear me okay? You're coming in clear, Bill. Rocket system primed. Dropping right jet. Dropping left jet. All clear. Good luck, Bill. Firing number one rocket. Fired. Aching <laughs> back. Firing number two rocket. Fired. Hey, Hank. Yes, Bill, what is it? Bill? Bill, are you receiving me? RX-3 from control, come in. Come in, RX-3. Hello, Bill, come in. Red tail leader from control. Red tail leader from control. Come in, red tail. Go ahead, Colonel. What about it, Joe? RX-3 overhead at approximately 70,000 feet. Maintaining a heading of north-northwest. I can barely make him, Colonel. Try calling. Roger. RX-3 from red tail leader. RX-3 from red tail leader. Come Mr. in, Hargrove. RX-3. Yes, Colonel? Come in, Share RX-3. it with me, Mr. Hargrove. In, Sit RX-3. here and run your fingers through your hair and wait RX-3. and think about it and share red it with me. Leader. Control from Red Tail Leader. Go ahead, Red Tail. We've lost him, Colonel. Stay up there, Joe, as long as you can. What do we do now, Colonel? I just told you, Mr. Hargrove, we wait. You and me. We wait. We've lost him, Colonel. You haven't lost me, Joe. I can hear you. Hello? Hello, Joe. I will try another frequency. Red Tail from RX3, can you make me? Red Tail from RX3, can you make me? I still can't get you, Joe. I will keep sending. Firing number seven rocket. Fired. Firing number eight, Rock. Fired. Oh, brother! This is RX-3 broadcasting to whom it may concern to all you people. This is Bill Westfall approaching 210,000 feet at four times the speed of sound. 210,000 feet, that's 40 miles straight up in the air to all you people. And that's where I am. You never saw anything like it. No clouds. And a color no one ever named before. Otherwise, there's nothing. There's there's no sound except my instruments. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Wait a minute. The, there is some something at 2 o'clock high. Really something, brother. And it, it's not a flying saucer either. This one's egg-shaped. It's huge. It, it's spinning like a top and it's coming toward me. Can you hear me? Can can you hear me? Listen. Listen, something has just happened. Something, a missile, something, a, a, a shot. Maybe through, through my canopy. The pressure is going down. Something is happening to me. That egg-shaped thing, I'm being pulled toward it. I have lost control of the ship. I have no control. I am going to be in pressure. In a moment, we continue with Suspense. Every Sunday, right tramps over wrong dramatically in Indictment, the unusual dramatic series that is based on stories of the criminal law with authentic procedures as they are followed by the office of an assistant district attorney. For the kind of excitement that is generated when justice goes into action, hear Indictment just a few minutes from now and every Sunday over most of these same stations. And now, 
we continue with The Outer Limit, starring Mr. Frank Lovejoy. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. We've waited a long time, Colonel. Well, we'll wait some more. But there's no point to it. May I make a suggestion, Colonel? What? Give it up. Make your report to Washington. What about you, Hargrove? To be frank with you, Colonel, in another 16 months, there'll be another plane, the RX-4, and the Air Force will give us another man to fly it. Until we're certain about this man, and we're not certain. What do you propose to do? The things that are in the manual. We'll organize search parties. We'll put spotter planes up in the air. Maybe Bill came down in the ocean. We'll call the Navy. Colonel... If the RX-3 came down on the ocean, it would sink in five minutes. It had no life preserver equipment on it. The added weight... We'll call the Navy in, Mr. Hargrove. Whatever you say, Colonel, but my guess is... What's your guess, Hargrove? My guess is that sometime, somewhere, on some beach or in some field, someone will pick up a ball of cooled metal. That someone will be holding what's left of the RX-3. I hear you. I I understand. Proceed, Zeglon. We have established communication with him, Commander, on frequency X29. Good. Proceed as ordered. Yes, Commander. Earthman, your brain is in turmoil, is it not? It has great difficulty in accepting what you see. Yeah, that's right. Accept it. What you see here exists. This this exists? It exists, Earthling. The spaceship you're on exists. Those jet dynamos you see before you exist. Jet dynamos driven by the harness power of a thousand suns. Listen, Earthman. Listen to them. Do you know what happened as you listened, Earthman? We have flung ourselves 10,000 miles into space. What do you say to that, Earthman? I don't know what to say. It is beyond the conception of your Earth brain. Then conceive this. Try to move, Earthman. You're not bound in any way. Try to move. Don't strain. It's impossible for you to move. There is a screen of force aimed at you. Now you may move about, Earthling. Proceed, Zeglon. Yes, Commander. Earthman, I perceive that your intellect now accepts the fact. You are aboard Space Patrol Ship S2J3. I am Captain Zeglon of the Galactic Guard. Galactic Guard? The Guardian of the Galaxy. The Guardian of the Universes. The instrument the Brotherhood of Worlds has set up in defense against such a world as yours. What puzzles you, Earthman? I can't see you. I I can feel that you're here, but I, I can't see you. There is no necessity for you to see us. It is sufficient that we communicate with each other. But talking to you is like... Well, it's not like talking. It's, it's as if it is all happening inside my brain. It is. That is how I'm reaching you. Not through your ears, but inside your brain. Do you remember what happened to you before you blacked out? I think so. That there was a sharp sound like... A bullet hitting the canopy. It was not a bullet. It was a ray. It was necessary to stop your flight. We have so much to tell you. Well, first, tell me about my ship. Is it lost? No. It is being repaired. It will be returned to you. And you will return to Earth because you are the Earth's only hope of survival. Hope of survival? What do you you mean? I will show you. (gasps) What you see before you is a panorama of your own universe far greater in scope than any Earthman has ever seen before. Observe. Observe where the line is pointing. Star 5, Galaxy C, Sector K. Is that the Earth? That dot, that speck you see revolving in the vastness, is your sun. A star whose surface is 12,000 times that of your Earth. 
Your earth is not even visible here. How, how did you know we even exist? That was our problem. We first became aware of your planet when we found atomic dust containing strontium-90 in the upper atmosphere. We traced it to your earth. It was that important to you? Quite. We determined that you were setting off thermonuclear explosions. That's why the Galactic Council has quarantined you. Quarantine? I, I don't understand. How? How are we quarantined? We have sealed off your planet from the rest of space. We have surrounded it with a force screen. When that screen has accumulated enough particles of atomic dust, your Earth will explode. Listen to me, Earthman. Listen. We have had our own wars, wars that almost destroyed our civilization. Now we have outlawed war throughout space, and we have outlawed your world. If there is another thermonuclear explosion, you will destroy yourselves. Take this back to your planet. Warn them, Earthman. Release him, Zeglon. Yes, Commander. Earthman, you will open that door. There is your ship. Get into it, Earthling. Are you ready, Earthling? Yes, I'm ready. You will be propelled into space. Close your canopy. Open aperture. Warn them, Earthman! Warn them! Fire! Tower to funny, man. Are you loaded, kid? How did you get in on this frequency? Listen, this is RX-3. RX-3, coming in for landing. Give me landing instructions. Tower to funny, man. Impossible that you're RX-3. Now get away from the area. The area cleared for interceptor practice approaches. Tower, this is Major Westfall in RX-3. Now, come on. Give me landing instructions. I am fresh out of rocket juice. Yeah. O okay, Major. In just a minute. Uh, tower to all aircraft in the base area. Tower to all aircraft in the base area. We have an emergency. All aircraft hold present altitude and proceed on a course of 180 degrees until advised. Radio silence will be maintained until the emergency is over. Okay, R RX-3, go ahead. I approximate my position 20 miles north of field at 10,000. Estimate six minutes to land. RX-3 from tower. You are cleared to land. Runway 9. Wind, east, southeast, 15. Roger. Coming down. <laughs> Give me a hand. Bill! Bill, what? Just help me off this plane, will you? Yeah. Bill, what Hank, happened? Hank, Hank, now listen, you won't believe it, but you've got to. Before I tell you anything, you've got to promise to believe me. You just, you've got to. Look, what did you write? No, before to... anything, Hank. Now, now, promise me. We'd better have you looked over, kid. No, no, I'll be all right. Now, just listen to me, Hank. Hank, they said the earth would explode. They said it was the end for us. They said that? Bill, come on, let's get over to my you, office. You don't believe it. Read it like an order, Bill. My office. What, uh, they, what, uh, they are you talking about? Hank, I chased me a spaceship, and I caught it, or rather, it caught me. I was cruising nicely, about 200,000 feet, that's where I spotted it. Hank, Hank, Oh, listen, you kid, you don't have no, to No, no, I've, I've got to tell you. They said I had to tell you. What? Don't you understand, Hank? I saw this thing. I saw it coming at me. I thought it was going to be the biggest smash, and... It wasn't. I, I came to. Inside their ship, Hank. Hank... I think I need a drink, an awful tall drink. Well, that can wait, too. I I want Major Donaldson to look at you. A psychiatrist? Well, what for? To test my jerks? Yes. Uh, yeah, something like that. Well, that's the story, Major Donaldson. Hank. Hank, you believe it, don't you? Just keep flying down there, Bill. Major, what do you think? Oh, I'm not sure. Now, Bill, these men from Mars... I didn't say they were men from Mars. Now, did you hear me say that they were men from Mars? No, 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 you didn't. All I'm trying to tell you is this. Whoever those people were, they know all about us, everything. About our wars, about our big bombs. They've got us... 
They have got us quarantined. Quarantined? Yes, quarantined. They've sealed us off from the rest of space. We have wars. We're sick. And we're going to die. They've seen to it that we will die. Well, go ahead, Bill. Well, there's nothing more to go ahead with. Another H-bomb and that's all. One more bomb and we're going to have the juiciest galactic Fourth of July of all time. Explode. Like that. How do you like it? All right, Bill, roll up your sleeve. Now, just forget it, Major. All I need is a couple of drinks. Sorry, Bill, not right now. Let the Major give you a hypo. Uh, Hank, I've got a drink coming. A a, a lot of drinks. And I want to see my wife. Yeah, later. I'll call Molly. Right now, you've got to get a little sleep. Go ahead, Major. Uh, Come on, Bill, let's leave. All right. All right, if it's in order, go ahead. Ah, there. You'll be okay in a few hours. I am... Okay, now. Sure, sure. We'll leave you here, Bill. It's all right if Bill sleeps in here, isn't it, Colonel? Sure, sure. But when you wake up, I'll have Molly here, and we'll have that drink together. Yeah. Well, maybe she'll believe you. Maybe you'll believe me then, Hank. You'd better. Come on, Major. He'll be okay by himself, Major? Well, he's been under a strain. But he'll sleep for quite a spell. I see. Well, we better get some sleep, too. Right. And don't worry, Colonel. He's a strong boy. Best nerves I've seen in a long time. I'd say things will be all right. Uh, delusions like Bill's latched onto. Well, delusions like this. Major. Yes, Colonel. Major, when you make your charts out for Bill and diagnose him and treat him and do all the things that you have to, when you do that, Major... Consider this. Yeah? How did he keep that plane in the air for ten hours? For ten hours, Major. When he had fuel to last him only ten minutes. In which Mr. Frank Lovejoy starred in William N. Robeson's production of The Outer Limit by Graham Dorr. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. The Outer Limit was adapted for radio by David Friedkin and Mort Fine. Supporting Mr. Lovejoy were Stacey Harris, Barney Phillips, Jack Crucian, Larry Thor, Sam Pierce, Jay Novello, Hans Conried, and Joe Kearns. The musical score was written by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Like to laugh? Then you'll like listening to Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks on CBS Radio later today. With Cupid taking pot shots at her from one side and Mr. Conklin, the school principal, badgering her on the other, our lovelorn school marm has a tough time tracking down her favorite male, Mr. Boynton. But since all of her difficulties are comic... Every episode of Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, offers immediate insurance against the blues. What can you lose? Here, Eve Arden is Our Miss Brooks on CBS Radio every Sunday over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>